and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to work on this beautiful, beautiful poinsettia throw together. Let me tell you a little bit more about this in just a moment. To start off with, I think this is one of these afghans where if you were to enter into a county fair, you would definitely probably, <laughs> I don't want to guarantee it, but you'd probably get a blue ribbon for something like this. This has the mixture of really being incredible for decor, but also having some intricate work that would boost it from just being a regular afghan into something totally extraordinary. I would also describe this afghan as that if you like somebody and you're just making them a, a crochet afghan, you wouldn't probably do it for them. But if you love somebody or really wanted to give something special, this would be an afghan that you would consider. So let me go and run you through some of the little tips that I found when working on doing my sample. So to go through some of the pattern tips that I have for you today is that I found the squares relatively easy, but I want to take you through the square step by step because there's something missing in the instructions that I felt really helpful and I really had to look at the sample here. So I have taken extra photography in order to really show you because there's one element where you have to slip stitch, but where exactly do you slip stitch? It says it here, but I think you need to physically see it or mentally see it or just see it in order to make it work for you. The squares are relatively easy. Once you have 12 of them, you just put them together. And then what you have to do is that I looked at this thing and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to start my body of work. Mm -mm, that's not how this one works. This one here, you have to prepare the, the square. So once you get them all whip stitched together, so you have 12 in a row, you have to prepare the side. Do you see how there's a blue line here? That's part of the preparation of it. And then you see that there's white. Well, there's an extra layer of white around it before doing the body of the work. Also, I then did the sample of doing the body itself and then I tried doing the cross stitching. I've never done cross stitching before in crochet. You know what? I have to say it was a lot easier than I expected. Now because this one here is a dark green and the white really bounces off it really beautifully, I didn't have the same luck with this. I wanted to really have kind of a snowflake kind of idea. I found the white was kind of buried in. So even though I followed the pattern, I just didn't feel it was bold enough. So what I did is I quadrupled my yarn. So I actually doubled up on my yarn, went through the pattern and then went through it again to create a really bold look. You should be aware though when I did this, it causes the stitches to stretch out a bit. And even though um, this afghan, even with the regular, you're going to have a hot mess on the back of it, you're still going to have a hot mess. In, but this is one of those afghans where you don't want to turn over because the whole amazing side of it is in the front side. It's not unusual for afghans. There's always a good and bad side. But this one here is one that you really don't want to turn over because it's not as effective on the back. So let's uh, just go through a little bit more before I take you down to the studio and show you a little bit more on how to work this. Now the final tip before I take you down to the studio is that we're going to do three strips and you can see one, two, and three and it's just the, the granny squares. Now one strip is going to have the body of work on one side and the other. That's the middle strip. So once we get this middle one done and we're prepared to do it, we're going to start and just single crochet back and forth on one side. Then, once you get your number of rows completed, you come and you start on this side. So in actual fact, there's going to be three panels by the time you're done. So this and this will be one, and then the next strip will then have its outside, and the next strip will have its outside. Those are your three panels, and all you're just going to do is right here, is that you're going to sew them all together to make one solid afghan. What I would also recommend too, before you sew everything together, I would recommend that you do your cross stitching before that. But wait, you want to make sure that you're going in the same direction. <laughs> you want to make sure. If you really notice it, all these arrows that you can see boop, 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 are all going in the same direction. So when you're really thinking about doing the cross, st cross stitch of this and you're doing it without the afghan being all together, it's just got to make sure that when it does come together, you don't end up with an odd one out that is going in the wrong direction or you can be frogging the whole thing. So it's just a great little tip uh, for you to do. I would cross stitch before sewing because it's just easier to get underneath when it really, when you really think about it. If I have to get here and I've crossed it and I've, 
all of it's attached. Just getting under to that spot to work on it is going to be a lot more inconvenient. So I would cross stitch before sewing everything. Once you have everything sewed, you just basically do a border and the border is actually just two rounds and it is unbelievably amazing. And this is an Afghan that you'll probably treasure for a lifetime and only give it to special people in your lives. So today's tutorial is going to be slightly different than what you're used to. I'm going to take you through the square and then I'm going to take you through the visuals on what you need to look for. This pattern is classified as easy and I'm just going to walk you through visually showing you what you need to do for certain elements to it. Um, this is actually one of those projects that is really, really easy. If you've never cross stitched before, this may be your first opportunity for you. And you know, just because there's a design here doesn't mean you have to use it. You can also just look at the diagram that's available in the pattern and maybe you want to come up with some other unique stuff. I really was thinking about cross stitching even a border around this. This is supposed to be a flower, but I was thinking to myself, I could have actually turned it into a snowflake by just chasing the outside with a darker blue. You know, creativity is really subjective. So without further ado, let's take you down to the studio and let's get you started on working on this together. So let's start off with our square first. It's a relatively easy pattern. Uh, it's just a matter of knowing where to slip stitch when we're getting to a certain round. This is what they look like here. And you will notice that there is a white border that you see here. But there's actually two lines here. There's actually the border for this uh, square here and then this is another piece on the outside which I'll explain later and also the same on the other side. So you have the border of the square plus uh, the crochet along the top piece. So let's uh, get started today. You need three different colors. So you'll need a middle color. If you don't want to use three colors, um, you can. it will change the effect of it but that's up to you. But uh, you'll need a middle color and then an exterior behind and then whatever popping out color this is here. Then that's what you need to start with. So let's get started now. To get started you'll need to create a slip knot. And remember that it never ever counts as one. So you just have to chain three and go one, two, and three. And we want to form a ring with this little three. So to form a ring we come into the very beginning our chain and then pull the yarn through to create this really tight little ring. And this straggler you want to keep on the outside of it so that you can trap it into place in the next part. Next you'll want to chain three. One, two, and three. And you want to double crochet 11 times around the center of this ring. So just wrap going into the center of the ring, pull through, pull through two, and two for a double crochet. And you want to do that with a total of 11 times. Now in the rules of crochet that chaining of three that we started off with is actually in fact a double crochet. So when you're keeping counts you'll end up with 12 uh, posts going all the way around the center of the circle. So this is only, uh, this color is only for this particular revolution and once we get to the end we're going to be fastening off and uh, weaving in our edges in order to make it work. So let's just count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then 10, 11 and 12. And what I want to do then is just slip stitch to the top of the chain 3 that we started off with to finalize that. So let's uh, create the cut for this. We want to just trim and I want to weave in my edges. So I'm just going to grab the yarn and then pull through like this and then I just want to weave them in and out of this section just for about four stitches. You can go a little bit more if you want to if you feel that you have to and in the next uh, revolution we're going to be trapping that further into position. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to trim off these ends now and so I'm ready for the next piece of the puzzle. The next piece of our puzzle is actually this white line that you see and we're just going to be playing in this blue circle here and putting these. But do you notice I can put my hook right behind it? It's just sitting on top. So the next part of this we're going to be creating all these loops and we're going to be dealing with that afterward. Okay, so let's create our slip knot with our next color. In this case it will be white. And this is what I recommend. So let's just put it onto the hook. We just have to go into any one of the outside stitches. It doesn't matter which one. We're just going to go in and we're going to fasten on this yarn. So, so just pull the yarn through and through. 
Now grab this straggler and just pull it through. So what I want to do is just I want to chain five but I'm gonna pull that straggler through the first two. And then I can safely trim that white afterward. So that was two, three, four and five. And now what I want to do is this I wanna come into the very next stitch that's available and I wanna slip stitch. So just come through and through. So here is the next section. So I want to begin to chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 8, 8, 9 and 10. And what I want to do then is come and I want to skip the next one and go to the second one over. See how I'm just pushing my finger down here? It just stabilizes the chain and I want to pull through and through as a slip stitch. Okay, so there's what you have so far. So now I'm going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. I'm going to come right down to the next one available and I'm going to slip stitch. So when you're chaining the five, the next one is always right beside it. When you're chaining of the ten, you have to skip one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. We want to skip one and then go down to the next one and we want to slip stitch. So we're not single crocheting, just slip stitch. So one, two, three, four and five. Come to the next one for a slip stitch. And then one, two, three, four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. Okay, skip one, go to the second one over. See how it went into the gap there? I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I get right into a stitch. So try again. So it's a good little error of mine just to be able to prove to you that what you don't need to do. Okay, and then one, two, three, four and five. Come to the next. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten and go to the very last one. Go to where you started. Just like this. Okay, so that will conclude your whole round as you're going. So you're going to have large loops, small loops, large, small and all the way around. So let's begin our next revolution. Okay, now that you have your white in here, we cannot actually start our next revolution until we fasten off. So we're going to fasten off this one nicely. You will probably need a darning needle. So we're just going to pull through and through. And what I would strongly recommend is that you, this is one area you will want to do a darning needle with. You know this whole project is about cross stitching anyway. So this is something you should become comfortable with. And just put a darning needle and just slip it through some of the white section and go back and forth three times. And what this will do is it will trap this white into position permanently so that you won't see any loose edges. You can try to weave it but I can guarantee if you just try to weave normally um, it will fall out eventually and you'll have like tails coming out and eventually your work may fall apart as well. So you want to really kind of take your time if you're going to do this kind of afghan you're going to want to spend the time and just go back and forth three times and this is the third. So it's impossible for it to fall out once it's in three times because the afghan or project cannot move in three different directions at one time. And I can safely cut that first one. And so basically I end up with the nice area just like so. So it looks a lot more professional. So let's uh, begin the next section. To begin the next section I want you to create a slip knot. And we are going to go. And so in the instructions it says to fold down or, or bring in front the large loop. So just bring any one of them forward just as long as it's only one and go directly in the middle. There will only be one stitch in the middle anyway. So go directly in the middle and that's where we're going to attach this. So attach just like so. And I would recommend this loose string here. Just wrap it and bring it around a couple times. So we're going to have to chain three anyway. So one and then wrap both and two and then let that extra one go and three. So it says to slip stitch in the same stitch of these here. You can when it says to do that you have to be on the inside of this loop. 
So when you go to slip stitch you don't want to be on the exterior of coming here. You want to make sure you're staying on the interior. So we're going to double crochet on the interior. Okay with where it's slip stitched. Just like that. See so now you can see that it's looking like it's in between this loop and that's what we're looking for. What we need to do now is that we need to work with this smaller loop. So in order to get there we have to chain two first to so one and two and we're just going to single crochet ourselves around this loop. So just go right in between and single crochet. So now we have to earn ourselves back to the center of the next one. So we have to chain two first, one and two and we come and we need to work in the slip stitches here plus the one in the center. So when you go to the same stitch it has to be on the interior. So just fold it down in front like this and double crochet the first one in the same spot that you did the slip stitch but it is on the inside of the loop area and then double crochet the next and double crochet the next again on so it's on the inside. Okay this was the slip stitch and then we can chain two, one and two. You can fold that back up if you wish and then just single crochet this loop. Chain two, take this next big loop, fold it down. We want to single crochet in the first spot where the white is also single or slip stitched in. So you want to double crochet in the same stitch that the first one is in and double crochet the next and double crochet the next which is where the, the last slip stitch is. And now we want to earn our way to here so we chain two, single crochet around that loop. Okay and one and two, fold down the next section. The first one is a double crochet where it's slip stitched. Okay and double crochet in the middle and double crochet on the other slip stitch. And one and two. Okay we want to go around this loop so single crochet and then chain two okay, and fold this down. So this is where we started so you only have one stitch left. So we're just going to fold it down and that's right where you did the slip stitch. And we want to join it at this point with the top of the chain three. So this is what it will look like at this point. So you have these exposed loops that are not yet ready to be buried into the project at this time. So let's begin the next row. Let's begin our next round. So we're simply just going to chain three, one, two and three and we want to double crochet into the next one available. So that's pretty easy and now this is the chain two space right here. The first one and we're going to put two double crochet in there. And then we're going to chain three as we're going to turn the corner. So one, two and three. Come on the other side of this single crochet and you're going to put two double crochets in that side. So that gapping space is your turning space. So let's just fold this piece right here. Just bring it in the front and double crochet into the three double crochets that are there. So just one each. And then your next space that's going to be available to you. Okay there's going to be the you're going to put two double crochets there and you need to turn a corner again. So to turn the corner you're going to chain three. So one, two and three. Come on the other side of this single crochet over here. You're going to have two and now we're going to fill in these double crochets, one each. It's really uh, important that you keep your counts on these. Um, the exterior, I actually made a mistake on one of the squares that I miscounted and it does make a difference. So you want to make sure you're keeping count. So you're going to have three in the center and two on both sides of the spaces. So we're going to have two in this one and then chain three. That's right. Okay come on the other side of this over here. Chaining of two. Like so and then one double crochet into each of the double crochets that you see. Okay and then two double crochet into this gapping space. We're coming around nearly to the beginning again. So chain three, one, two, three as we turn the corner. Again two double crochets into this next space. 
Now this is the side that we started on. So you started off in the middle. You can see how you're matching. So you only have one double crochet left. And what you need to do at this point is that you need to join it to the top of the, of the chain three and you need to fasten off at this time. So you can actually this particular round you can just do fastening off as normal. You don't need to put a darning needle if you don't want to and just pull it through. And what you want to do is then just weave it in and out of these stitches and I would go all the way back to your corner because the next revolution every stitch is going to get something. So you can uh, safely trap all of that into position as you go all the way around in your next revolution and the next revolution is the completion of this square. That's how fast one of these will go. So you can still see at this point that these things are still sitting out just like this. The next revolution is where we're going to put those down and those will be permanently into position. So what I want to bring your attention to is that this here is going to be fastened up into the next section. So what you have here is that you have three and three with one in the middle. That one in the middle is where this is going to be fastened up when it comes up. So no matter what side that you're looking on you have a total of seven. So just look at it in groups of three. So three, three and there's your one in the middle. So it's going to be becoming very obvious anyway but I really want to show you that. So I'm going to create a slip knot to start off with the border. And we're just going to start off in any corner. It doesn't matter which corner that you start off with. So just go in to a corner space, grab the yarn, pull through, chain one and put this straggler down on top of the line and trap that in position. So you're going to single crochet five times. So one and two and three and four and five. So there is your corner and so you're going to single crochet in the first three. Now the first three here you gotta make sure you get that first one right and it's just one and then the next one for two and the next one for three. So you could either count that out or just look because now the fourth one is your next one and so now what you're going to do is that you're gonna slip your hook. When you come around you're gonna slip it behind through here and through to the next stitch and you're going to single crochet that permanently into position which is going to hold it in the upright position. Now you're going to single crochet the remainder three before turning the corner. So now you're on the corner so it's five. So one, that was one and two and three and four and five. Okay, so again you can just look at it. So the first three are by themselves. So single crochet, single crochet, single crochet. So this is your fourth or you could just visually look at it. So come around the loop and into the fourth one and single crochet that into position. So you can start seeing it's really coming out and then just continue to single crochet the remainder. And there will be three left before coming to your next corner. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay and then coming into the next one. So you got three in a row. So one, two and three. So the fourth is your middle one. So scoop around, get that chain, go into your next one and then single crochet the remainder of the three. Okay here's your next corner. So there's going to be five See how you, I uh, wove in there that's being trapped into position. So that's two, three, four and five. Let's grab our first three. So one and two and three. Okay let's scoop it behind get that and go into the fourth. Got it and then there should be three left which there is. So that will conclude off this square and what you're going to want to do is just weave in your ends nicely. So you got your three in here just uh, join with the top of the beginning of the first single crochet and voila you have everything done. Everything just needs to be stretched out. Um, you, you can actually be a little bit lazy with your um, with your yarn here. This has to be um, single crochet across the top anyway. So you can either fasten it in professionally or you can just weave it in and you know that when you come across the top you're going to trap this more into position anyway. So it's really kind of up to you on what you feel more comfortable with. And of course if you do want the quality 
um, you will want to fasten this off um, professionally as well especially if you're doing a show and this is what everything looks like at this point so it will stretch out and everything will be beautiful so let's uh, move on to your next part of this tutorial So now that we have our square done it's now up to us to make 36 of these. 12 of these are going to go in a row to go all the way down and once you have your 12 you're going to want to whip stitch them together on one side only and when you whip stitch what you really want to pay attention to is the outside border. Just go in the outside loop only so don't go into both stitches just go into the outside and when you start your whip stitching you know how there's five in the, in the, in the corner here. Make sure you go into the one directly in the middle which is number three and whip stitch both of them all the way across. The stitches will match each other and finish off in the third one which is the middle of the next square and you're going to want to do that for all 12 and you'll end up with a strip that looks very similar to this. So what's going to happen at this point is that once you have your strip together is that you need to really pay attention that we are going to be making this into like a big solid block. So once you have your 12 done on the ends only you are going to put in the same color. So you're just going to start off, don't go across first, go and do the small edge first and right on the very corner you're going to put the same color that exists in the main color of your afghan. You will notice on the outside uh, portion of this afghan, I'll put a photo up right now, you'll notice that there's a green strip and this is just going to help you separate the border. It's just a better look overall but this white section will take you right to the border. So you're going to put this in first and you're going to come to the other side and do the other side before continuing. Then what you're going to do is that you're going to single crochet using the smaller hook. So we've been using a five and a half or size I. We're going to move down lower to a five or a size H and it's going to make it even more smaller and it's just going to be a nice tight finish and you are going to start off on the side of this blue section here and single crochet. So you're going to get that one there, you're going to go into your corner and you're going to grab them all the way across. Now what I did here, see where they're joining? You're going to grab them in the middle here or where they're um, joining here. When you go in it just makes a nicer fit and essentially you're just going to do this white line which is the matching of the exterior of this granny square all the way across. You're going to fasten off and weave in your ends. You're then going to do the same for the other side. You're going to turn it over and start again on the, on the end and work your way all the way across. So once you have this look all the way on your 12, so you're going to have a solid line here, solid, you have your ends, you're then ready for the body part of your particular afghan. You will have a total of three strips. Now two of the strips are going to be looking like this. So you'll have a strip and then your body of work and then a strip and body of work on the other one. Only one strip which is your center strip will have a strip and then the body work will be here and here. So when you go to start making these what's going to happen is that you're going to take up the side and you're just immediately going to join in and you're just going to single crochet yourself back and forth for, for 41 rows and it doesn't matter which strip you're working on it's always 41. And then what you're going to do then is then start the embroidery. So essentially on the left side or the right side you are going to have your strip with the body work on one side and then the middle one will have the strip plus the body work on one side plus you're just going to pick up the other side and do this side as well and where you're going to be joining it then would be the next strip right here going into place. So let's uh, cover some of the cross stitching right now. Pattern. In the pattern is the diagram and basically you have to act like these single crochets are a graph which because they are single crochet they're pretty much square so they are like a graph. And so you essentially have to start on the bottom and you can follow the graph and just count over and up to start and what you want to do is this is your starting point and then you can start following the squares that are available. Now what I thought to myself is that even though this would have looked a lot better if I would have had a darker background, I felt it was lost within this thing here. So what I decided to do is that I doubled up on my yarn so I had two strands of yarn coming through my, my darning needle at one time and I went over the pattern and then I went through the pattern again to really doubling it up. So what does it look like on the back? 
Well even if you're doing the single strand it's not going to be very pretty so it's not an afghan you want to you're going to want to turn over. <laughs> but look at this mess over here. So in order to get it to look really fabulous here is that you can really play around with the different ideas of cross stitching. It has a very different look so you're thinking to yourself well you could have applied a motif and etc. It's not the same. So let's uh, cover on how to do some cross stitching at this time. So what I do is that I don't have a lot of yarn but I have enough that I would be able to complete once. Once you start you'll realize how much yarn you can really put on and work with clearly. So I'm going to create a slip knot on this side that is not with the needle and I'm going to start off in the back. So right now I have to create this arrow that you see here but right here. So what I want to do is that I want to come in from the back side and I want to pop it up okay through the front. Okay, so the needle is going to come out through the front and I want to pull it through. Okay, and I want to go down. So it's a matter about planning ahead on where your next stitch should be. So I'm going to come down on an angle. So I'm just going to look at it here. You will notice that basically where they're attached is basically the cross sections. So to come down on an angle like this I would have to cross over this one here. So I'll go down in like there. And then what I want to do because I created that slip knot on the back I want to pull this and I want to put this needle through that slip knot and it will hold it and secure in position just like so. So now I want to pop it up back through the top again and you don't want to be over tight. If you're over tight then you lose the effect. So now I've got to come up on an angle so I'm going to come back out the other side of the single crochet like this and I want to cross over and go down like this. So the trick is is that you have to really kind of plan ahead on where you're coming up and down because you can't come up and down the same hole. So now I have to come up on an angle because I need, I'm going down one more. So what I want to do then is just come up through and the next one and then cross over. So when I said I doubled up on the yarn what I decided to do, let me just finish off this here before I explain that. So I'm just coming across and I just got to go back and forth. Now I think it's easier to do the cross stitching in the little panels like this versus a whole afghan um, in order to do. But you can see here that you're starting to create the effect. So what I did for doubling up on the yarn is that I created two lengths that actually it's one massive string and instead of going up like this so watch what happens. So I'm going to just pretend I'm going to double up. Okay so I'm going to come up through and this time I'm leaving both strings up like this. See and just doubling that is just thickening up the way that it looks. You will use more yarn but you can see that it's more pronounced when you double up. So what I did on mine then is that I went over the, I did the pattern. So I did like one section of the, the petal and then I went back over it a second time. So it's going to take you twice as long to do it the way that I'm showing you but you'll end up with a really bold look and that's basically up to your creativity whether you can handle that or not. It will take you extra time. This is one of, this one thing, a project that you know you're not going to want to be taken lightly on who gets it. <laughs> see? So you can just see that I just quadrupled the yarn and it has a lot different effect than what it looks right there. And so that's something that's up to you on what you think is good for you. And but either way, I think it's a winner. So essentially you're going to cross section yourself so essentially you're going to do cross stitching all the way across and just follow this. This is really easy to maintain the line. Just count your boxes on the actual diagram in order to follow along. And if you do make any mistakes you know you're going to have to frog it but sometimes you know sometimes a mistake can actually work out in your favor. And in this uh, particular case there's an arrows on this side and arrows on the other side. So when you're going to attach them together you've got to make sure that when you are going to sew them together that these arrows are facing in the right direction that you don't have one odd ball out. So let's uh, review covering the border next.
Before I finish and let you see the border, how I finish off the back is this, I slide the hook underneath a few stitches like this and I create a knot to secure it into position and then what I just do is just slide it um, my famous like three times back and forth. You could do it twice. It's got the knot so it's going to hold but when you go in you want to make sure you're not going too deep. You're just going into some fibers just to hold it and you're just kind of burying it into these. It helps with a sharper um, darning needle like you kind of see here than it does a, a blunt one and I definitely use a steel one versus plastic and once you get that done you can just safely trim off your edges and it would just look like that. So there for it looks like that in the front. So let's start off with your border and at this point you will have it all complete. It will be completely assembled and you will never go down the side of one of these um, squares just like this. You'll only go along this side here. So essentially what we're going to do at this point is that we're going to join it in here and we're going to work our way around. So let's just join this yarn and you're going to go into a corner so the very first and then just chain one and then you're going to put three single crochets into that same spot so that you can effectively turn the corner. So this one is really easy. All you just need to do is chase around the afghan uh, one single crochet into each. Now when you get to the sides because you have single crocheted each one is a single crochet on the side and it's really easy to maintain that as you're going all the way around. So just uh, quickly do that and when we come back I'll show you how to do the scalloping or the shells on the outside next. Remember also when you get to the other corner you will be putting in three single crochets on the other corner also to make that a lot of sense. So we're coming up all the way around this. This is just a sample but if this is yours you'd be coming up all the way around and the trick is knowing where to start on the next level as we go to create the scallop edging all the way around. So I've just come right to my last one. The next one has my three and all I want to do is just I want to single sl sorry slip stitch into the beginning one. So to begin the next level all I'm just going to do is slip stitch to the second one over. So it's the second one of three so I'm directly right into the center. So let's begin to do the next round next. To begin the next section is that we just need to start off with the chaining of one and then single crochet into the same stitch. We want to skip only one and go to the second over and we're going to put in two double crochet, one and two followed by a chain three, one, two and three and then coming into the same stitch for two more double crochet. And we want to work our way across using the same kind of idea. So we're going to skip two double crochet or two singles and we're going to single crochet into the third only and then what we're going to do is that we're going to skip two more and then do the same thing. So we're going to do um, two double crochet, chain three, and then two double crochet. Okay, so skip two, single crochet into the next and then skip two and then put in that all the way around. So continue that. I'll show you what to do in the next corner and I can let you be for the remainder of this project to get it done and have something to celebrate at the end. The goal is when you get to the corner that you want to put in that one single crochet right in the very edge. So in this case because mine is a sample and I don't have the right amount of stitches I'm going to want to fake it in so that I can make it work. So I'm just going to instead of going over two I just went over one and then I'm going to go over only one instead of two and I'm going to end up with being a little different than um, than what we've been doing across but I think it's going to blend in just perfectly. So I'm just putting it my shell in right here and then I'm going to single crochet right on the on the third on the middle one. But I still want to start off the same way so I'm going to skip over one only and basically do it uh, starting again. So chain our two double crochet, chain three and two double crochet into the same one. So sometimes in the end sometimes you just got to fake it. You know you don't want to pull apart your project because it's not working right at the end and again you're going to skip two and then start again with the single crochet, skip two and then doing the shell again of the two doubles, chain three and 
two more doubles into the same one and work your way all the way around using that same concept. Just judge your corners in the ANSI. It doesn't look so bad. So I didn't follow it exactly but it, you can see that it still works. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. Stay tuned for more free patterns and ideas right here next time. We'll see ya.